this is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Please hit the notification bell so you'll know when new videos are being uploaded. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel, and I really appreciate it. Today, I'm going to talk about something we don't talk about in the black community. And the reason we don't talk about it is because it's touchy. We talk about having a conversation about race. That's what so-called black leaders talk about all the time. We need to have a conversation about race, which means they won't talk to white people about their behavior towards black people. That's usually what that means. But we never talk about the conversation that we need to begin with before we have the conversation about race with white people. And that's the conversation we need to have with each other. And some things that we could point out with each other that maybe we can work on in the black community before we have this national discussion on race that nobody's going to have with us because we are touchy and we don't want certain things talked about. For instance, we say black lives matter because we know that black lives matter and we are concerned about Black people being killed needlessly and stupidly over foolish stuff. Now, when white people get in the conversation, they're going to want to say, well, okay, what about black on black crime? And that becomes a real issue. I was having a discussion with an African-American man on Twitter, and I was discussing something that had happened, which was black on black crime. This man was going to pretend that he didn't know what black on black crime was and was going to turn around and chastise me for saying anything. At which point I said, we don't have a conversation because we have to talk about the totality of what's going on in our communities. Because there are those of us who are not just concerned about our families and our immediate communities, but the totality of the African-American communities in the United States. So I, there are some things that I want to talk about that I think we do need to discuss. So I'm entitling this video, How Elevating Ignorance Has Backfired on the Black Community. There is this saying that if you want to hide something from a black person, put it in a book. The first time you hear that, it's sort of funny because, you know, black people don't read and you laugh. And then the next time you hear it, it's not quite as funny. And then you continue to hear it and you realize this isn't funny at all because that's a part of the trick, the scam that has been played on black people. Put it in a book and then make it against the law for black people to learn how to read. Now, that's a strategy. That is a strategy that worked effectively against us and our ancestors because everything that was done to us was in a book somewhere. When you go back and dig up those ancient and antique books, books from antiquity that were written back in 1232 and 1401 and you see that the trick that was being plotted against Africa and African people was written in a book. It's in books. And then you put you pull the trick on the people and then make it against the law for them to learn how to read. I challenge any African American person that's a descendant of slavery to read the 20th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Read that book cuz it's not a long chapter, it's a short chapter. Read that chapter until you understand what it says and then ask yourself the question, what did the Bible say was going to happen? And who did it happen to? I challenge any African American or any any descendant of slavery, whether it's African American or Jamaican or Haitian or Bahamian, read that scripture and then ask yourself that question. Who who did this happen to? So making sure that the African people who were taken into captivity were ignorant, self hating, and fearful of their captors, which is white people in this case. Those three things were important in building this Western empire called the United States of America that we live in. Keeping us ignorant was one of the strategies that was used to subdue us and enslave us. Keeping us ignorant of ourselves, of our culture, 
In fact, we couldn't even learn how to speak their language. So the the result of that was that we didn't learn how to speak English correctly. And that's where we get this African American vernacular English that seems to be catching on to something to be popular. But it was born out of the fact that our ancestors weren't even taught to speak English properly. So ignorance has been a very effective tool used against us and we have embraced it. We have elevated it, glorified it, and have created insulting by words to label those who reject ignorance and pursue knowledge. We call them lames and simps and any other thing. And I say we, I don't do it, but this is, this is how it's done. Because ignorance has to be maintained, apparently, in the black community at all costs. But this is backfiring on us. It is backfiring on us and it's going to hurt us in the future because we are the only group of people who thinks that being ignorant is popular or cute. Everybody else is pursuing knowledge. Everybody else is pursuing expertise in something. And we still glorify athletes. We glorify entertainment people who, in many cases, dropped out of school. Russell Simmons, who was the rap mogul until he fled the country because they had some kind of a case against him, was going around telling young people they didn't need an education. And African-American children of a certain, certain African-American children will absorb that kind of ignorance because he didn't believe that because both of his daughters are college educated. So that lets you know right there that they didn't take their father's advice. And I was in school when I was substitute teaching of not long ago. I'm talking to children who are on free lunch and 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 uh living in section eight houses and having to go to the lunchroom at the end of the day to get uh take out food because they're food insecure. And they're standing there telling me they don't need an education. I said, Well, what's your plan for life? Well, they don't know what the plan is, but they just know they don't need an education because they've heard somebody that they respected that should be a responsible person telling them that they don't need an education. Nobody else is telling their children that. But this is what you get from black children. This is ignorant. And it's ignorant on a level that you almost can't even do anything about it. Now, that isn't to say that all of our young people are buying into that because we absolutely do have students who are succeeding African-American women, as I continue to say, according to the education statistics of the most educated group in the United States. And people come on my page, on my channel, in my comment section, and fight with me against that black men, mostly in white men. But that's what the statistics say. And I'm going to continue to say it until they change it. I'm going to talk about three areas in which I think ignorance is hurting black people. There are more, I'm sure, but I'm going to talk about three. And they are education, politics, and social culture. In my teaching career, I taught the second grade for several years. And in the state of Alabama, we teach matter and energy in the second grade. It is the beginning of matter and energy. So we teach electrical energy. Alabama Power gave us science kits. In the science kit, we were to wire a house, teach the children how to wire a house. What we did was that we got a box and we, we um, cut the box in the shape of a house, painted it, and made it look like a real house with doors and windows. And you have to do the cutouts and that's fun with second graders. And then we did the bulbs, we did the they gave us the copper wire, they gave us we used paper clips as uh switches. It we had everything in the kit that we needed to wire the house. I had uh, several black boys. It was a reading intervention class. I was a reading specialist at that time. And those, I was shocked at how those black boys jumped into that. They loved it. And all they had, everything was the Alabama power kid had everything spelled out. All they had to do was read the directions and we did it together. We worked in groups. So there was, I think it was five groups. 
And it was an, an integrated class, but because it was reading intervention class, there were more black boys in the class. It was one of the most rewarding experiences I had as a teacher because they really got into it. And I came to understand, even in teaching math and science, those boys really liked doing things. They really liked the idea of science and how things worked. The problem comes in and we when we drop the ball is that we don't encourage that kind of ingenuity in black boys. What they're encouraged to do is play ball and rap. And they're enmeshed in this ridiculous rap that seems to be getting worse and worse. And really we're losing too many of them because they're getting so far away from their center in their pursuit of money and pleasure and whatever it is they're doing. But from the outside looking in, it looks destructive to me. But we are doing black boys a disservice when we don't encourage them in the STEM programs, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, because they really have a gift for it. They also like taking care of animals. They like the mechanism of how things work. The second area where ignorance is overshadowing good judgment, in my opinion, is in the area of politics. We are not using our political capital to greatest advantage. And I know this is not an original thought because many people have said that. But we are not being savvy in using the political power that we have. And we do have political power. And that is why they keep telling us about the Latinos and the Hispanics are the largest minority group because I think that's to, done to undermine us and to make us think, well, what we're doing is not important. What we're doing is extremely important. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep saying that. And we know that when we do vote, it makes a difference. And when we don't vote, it makes a difference. The political ignorance that we exhibit, as far as I'm concerned, is that we don't use our political power for our greatest good. In Georgia, during the 2020 election, the Democrats won both Senate seats. And that was because of the grassroots mobilizing of voters by Stacey Abrams and her crew. And I hear black men criticizing her. What I would challenge them to do is get out there and match her, outdo her, as opposed to criticizing her and talking about her, outdo her. Because the mayor of Atlanta, uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, said that the same thing that happened in Georgia, which means two Senate seats going to the Democrats, could happen in Alabama, Mississippi, and South Carolina, because we have similar demographics, a lot of black people. If we could get black people in Alabama, Mississippi, South Carolina mobilized as they did in Georgia and get those Senate seats, then we could actually get something done. And it is, I believe, unwise and, and incorrect to say that voting doesn't matter or that your vote doesn't count because this country is run by politics. That is why politicians pander to different groups of people. That's why black women are being pandered to, because black women vote. We just have to decide how we want to use our political power for the greatest good for our communities. The third area where ignorance is really sort of taking us under is in our social demeanor. How we behave when we go out in public how we dress, how we speak, how we carry ourselves, and how we treat other people is important. Now, there's a lot of emphasis on how people treat, how other people treat black people. There's footage after footage after footage of video about somebody doing something to black people. Oh, look how they did the black people. A lot of these are black men, too. Look how they did them. Look what they said. They called them the N-word. They did this or they that. We have to understand that the American culture is set up so that black people can be the center of anything negative. If we don't get anything else, we really need to get that. So it's almost entertaining to see somebody doing something hateful and mean and violent to black people. Because when you go back and look at, because we have to go back to our beginning in the United States, because that's, that's, that's our point of reference. 
And you see how those white people would be standing around looking at black people doing a hanging. Sometimes they'd have three or four black people hanging from a tree. And white people would just be standing around dipping snuff and laughing and talking and eating peanuts and gesturing and pointing to the black person and showing the white child what was happening to the black person. So our demeaning is a source of entertainment in America. To a large extent. So we always have to be mindful of that. So when they tell us, well, you have to be twice as good. You have to do, you, it's really true. You have to be careful about how you carry yourself in this country. Now you can have a good life in America. You really can. But there are some basic things that you have to understand. So when you go out in public and you are not correct, you gonna get. We gonna get it. It gonna. It's gonna come down hard on black people. And then when we go out there without being mindful or thinking that we don't have to use good manners, it's just gonna be worse. Recently, in this town where I live, they opened a bowling alley. And when something opens around here, because it is a majority white town, although there are a lot of black people here. So when something new comes to town, it's just a big deal, you know, wrap around the wall for the restaurant and stuff. And this was before the pandemic. So they had to open the bowling, a bowling alley. And for whatever reason, a lot of black people were there standing around outside. So a white person had come out of the, the white man and his wife or girlfriend came out. And black people were sitting on the man's car. Now, what would possess somebody to sit on somebody else's car in 2020? That's when it was. It was 2019, before the pandemic. It, 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 it blow. I mean, you know, it's beyond my comprehension that you would be sitting on somebody else's car. And so then it just became a big blow up because... The white man went off and then the black folk went off too. These are young black kids, women, black women. And it just began with a big write up in the paper and then it had to change the whole rules <laughs> because of how black people were acting. I'm just saying that it is good to use good manners and use protocol, even if you are a black person. These are my thoughts. I believe that not putting our best foot forward in education, politics, and social culture is having a negative effect on our communities. Black women are said to be the most educated group in the United States. Now, I feel like black men ought to pull up, and I believe that black children need to be given the best opportunity to perform the best that they can educationally. As far as politics is concerned, together we elected a black president. Now people say, oh, black people didn't uh, elect President Obama. They could have done that alone. What black people did was put President Obama in position to win. Black people in the South and the Midwest in particular, and really all over the country, voted for President Obama in the primary. You cannot run in the general election if you don't win the primary. And he absolutely would not have won the Democratic primary had it not been for black people. And so that is why we take credit for that. As far as our social culture, I don't believe that there's any place in this country where black people are not concerned about some of the behavior and some of these um, mannerisms that are coming out of the music industry and to some extent the sports industry and how these people, how they're behaving is impacting how young black people behave. So we really need to be as strong as we can be educationally, politically, and socially. And as the as the sign says on the screen, good manners will open doors that the best education cannot. We are a very high profile ethnic group in the United States. It is still the case that when one of us does something negative, it's going to be blown up 
and fed to us over and over and over again. And it's not cute and it doesn't make us more popular to be rude or disrespectful. So I think that these are things that we need to work on again, as I said earlier, before we have this big conversation with anybody else, we need to stop being afraid to talk to each other because none of us is perfect. And we have some things that we need to deal with as a race so that we can respect ourselves, each other, and so, and so that other people can respect us. These are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Thank you for supporting my channel. Subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.